Now, when we get to the day of Arafah in particular, well, Hajj Arafah, Hajj is Arafah. Uh, just like, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu said, An-Nadmu Tawbah, wa dua hu al-ibadah, that regret is repentance and supplication is worship. Arafah is the core of Hajj and Arafah is the core of the Hijjah. So Arafah is the best day of Hajj. It is the most fundamental and most important pillar of the Hajj. And it is the most important day of the days of the Hijjah. Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala gives us eight days to prepare ourselves for that day. And just like the Hijjaj go out to Mina for Yawm Tarwiyah to rest even their camels, to rest everything for that momentous day of Arafah, the eight days prior are to get our souls ready, rested, rejuvenated for that day of Arafah. And the Prophet Sallallahu says to us that there's no day in which Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala sets free more souls from the fire than on the day of Arafah. On that day, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala draws near to the earth in a way that befits him and he exhibits his, his benevolence and he remarks to the angels, he boasts to the angels, ما أراد هؤلاء What is it that these servants of mine desire when they're coming out to make dua to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala? In this regard, the people are calling upon Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in different languages, all in one valley and of course around the world as well. And Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala calls the angels to bear witness that He has forgiven them. May Allah make us all amongst those that are forgiven. A tawbah, renew your covenant with Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. The day of Arafah is a day of covenants. Okay, it's the day of the initial covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So renew your covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the Prophet said it's the worst day of the year for shaitan. Shaitan has on his calendar marked the day of Arafah. It is the most humiliating day of the year for him, the worst day. He tries to take you away from Allah. And on that one day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws you near. And all of the effects of shaitan, all of the sins that he stains you with, it is gone on that day in particular. So it is the worst day of the year for shaitan, which means it's the best day of the year for the believers as they cling close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, the ulama, they say that all of the virtues, and this is from the virtues of the day of Arafah, all of the virtues of the last 10 nights of Ramadan specifically and Ramadan in general are found in this one day in Arafah which is pretty incredible. What do, what do we mean by that? Well, first and foremost, it's a day of fasting, right? For those that are not in Arafah, it's a day of fasting. So just like the month of Ramadan is a month of fasting, Arafah is a day of fasting. Secondly, it's a day of dua. The Prophet Sallallahu taught us to spend the entirety of the day in calling upon Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala until the sun sets, until Maghrib, every moment is precious on that day of Arafah. The third thing is that the prize of Ramadan is what? Allahumma inna ka'afu wa tuhibbul afu wa anna. Oh Allah, you pardon, you love to forgive and pardon. So forgive and pardon us. And that is to be freed from the fire. And there is no day of the year where Allah frees more people from the fire than that day. So the prize of Ramadan is embedded within that one day as well, subhanAllah. So the day of Arafah combines the virtues of Ramadan, the virtues of the last 10 nights within just a few hours. How important are those hours, subhanAllah. And by the way, just on a very practical level, uh, if there's a, a possibility for you to take a day off of work, if you can, then that's the day to do so, inshaAllah ta'ala. Just if you're thinking about vacation days or sick days or whatever it may be, then bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, uh, take a day off and let that be a day that you extend yourself. And if you can't, then still use it as a day of dhikr, even as you're doing everything else. So what is the best dua of Arafah? And what was the Prophet Sallallahu saying that entire time? Okay, and this is perhaps, subhanAllah, one of the most beautiful understandings of dua that can be extracted from the dua of the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet Sallallahu made dua on the day of Arafah, all the way from Dhuhr to Maghrib, without pause. He prayed Dhuhr and Asr, shortened and combined. And the Prophet ﷺ made dua all the way from Dhuhr to the time of Maghrib. And we don't have anything of his dua except for one. SubhanAllah. When the Prophet ﷺ would go on a Safa wal Marwa, and he would do his Sa'i, and he would make dua sallallahu alayhi wa between la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir la ilaha illallah wahda 
أنجز وعده ونصر عبده وهزم الأحزاب وحده. These three du'as of the Prophet ﷺ. Between those du'as, the Prophet ﷺ would make long du'as, long du'as. Every single circuit. So every time he stood on Safa, every time he stood on Marwa, between those du'as, the Prophet ﷺ would lengthen his du'a. We don't have any narration about what he would say. When the Prophet ﷺ would stone the Jamarat, SubhanAllah, look how du'a is embedded in Hajj. When he would stone the Jamarat, between the Jamarat, the Prophet ﷺ would face towards the Kaaba and raise his hands and make du'a. And he would take a long time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, making du'a. We don't have anything narrated from that du'a. The day of Muzdalifa, the Prophet ﷺ would pray Fajr and he would remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and he'd make du'a until the sunrise. We have nothing narrated of that du'a. Why? Because the point of du'a is not to be on script. The point of du'a is to be sincere and connect to your Lord. Sincere supplication. And so we have the du'as from the sunnah, which are undoubtedly blessed. But we also have the example of du'a from the sunnah, which is also blessed, which is that raw emotion connecting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own language, in your own way, in those moments. And so what do we have from the Prophet sallallahu about the day of Arafah? The best du'a, one narration the Prophet sallallahu said, La ilaha illallah, just La ilaha illallah. And another narration, the more famous one, the Prophet sallallahu said, the best of what I and the Prophets have said on this day. So when Musa السلام, stood before Allah on this day, when Ibrahim السلام, stood before Allah on this day, when Muhammad السلام, stood before Allah on this day, what did they say? لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير None has the right to be worshipped Allah. He alone who has no partners to him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and all praise and he has power over all things now i want you for a moment um, to just stay with me inshallah ta'ala about how beautiful this dua is and this is something that i want us to try for this year in particular and hopefully it can become a practice that we take on beyond inshallah ta'ala there's an authentic narration where the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever says this dua on a normal day, 100 times. 100 times, la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Whoever says this 100 times in one day, the Prophet ﷺ said the reward of that is, it's as if he freed 10 slaves, as if, and 100 good deeds will be written for him, and 100 bad deeds will be wiped out from his accounts. And on that day, he will be protected from the morning until the evening from the shaitan. And no one will be superior to that person except for one who increased in that which he has done, meaning one who even did more than a hundred. Okay? This is on a normal day. To say, La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. The Prophet ﷺ said the reward of freeing one person from slavery is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would free every part of your body from the fire. What then of the reward of freeing 10 people from slavery? The Prophet ﷺ mentions the good deeds being written for you, the sins being wiped out, and you being protected from the shaitan. And no one is superior to you except for one who did more than you. So here's a very basic prescription for the day of Arafah. If this is on a normal day to say this a hundred times, then on the day of Arafah, make sure you say this dua at least a hundred times. And the barakah, only Allah knows how much mercy, how much blessing will be written for you as a result of it. If that's the best thing that you could say on the day of Arafah, then make sure that you say it at least a hundred times ta'ala, on that day. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to attain that reward and so much more beyond what we can comprehend. Allahumma ameen.